Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about and discuss some strategies to help mitigate against disasters such as power outs and what I'm going to do to add a UPS to my tank. When it comes to events that can cause a disaster in our tanks, none is really more dreaded than a power outage. In general, within our tanks, any single failure of a piece of equipment usually won't spell immediate catastrophic failure to the tank. Of course, there are exceptions, but for many people, the most feared outcome is a power outage because with that, every device that provides life support to our reef tank will simultaneously stop working. Now, there are a few things you can do in the event of a power outage to buy yourself some time and potentially get you through a relatively unscathed. The simplest and cheapest would be to have a battery powered air pump and air stones on hand that can be turned on to provide a minimum level of water movement and oxygenation. For short power outs, this may be all that it takes to save a tank and the fish therein. However, the big risk with this approach is that you have to be home to catch the power out, or if it happens in the middle of the night, you need to be woken up by something to even know about it, which in many cases won't happen. So stepping up from there, another approach would be to buy a dedicated battery backup module that are available for many products on the market. Ecotech make a battery unit that's specifically designed to run their pumps and wave makers, as do brands like Icecap and Jabo. Most of these are intercompatible with a variety of pumps and devices and all serve a similar function. They provide a 12 volt power supply directly to your pumps when the power goes out and will keep things running, at least until the unit's battery runs dry. Depending on the number of pumps and what settings you have them on, this can be anything from an hour to a full day. They also have the option to daisy chain more than one unit together in order to increase the capacity and runtime. The downsides to these types of units is that they can only power 12 volt devices. So any AC powered pumps, your heaters, lights, and lots of other things connected to your tank are out of the question and won't be powered. The other downside to these units is they can be quite pricey. For example, the Ecotech battery backup is normally about 300 Australian dollars. That then leads to the highest tier solution for powering your tank under a blackout, and that's a generator option. Whilst it may be considered overkill by some, they are very effective, easily purchased from large hardware stores, and can power a tank for as long as you're able to keep refilling them with petrol or diesel depending on the model you buy. Generators come in all shapes and sizes, so make sure to get one that's able to power all the devices you want to keep running on your tank. Also, if you want to de-risk the scenario of you not being home or awake during a blackout, you'll need to get one that has the ability to turn on automatically when the power goes out. Otherwise, your reaction time will still be the weakest link in this equation. A downside to generators is that they need to be run outside, which can make wiring them into your fish tank's electricals a challenge for some. And for those of you with no backyard or who live in an apartment, like I do for example, generators unfortunately are simply not an option. But there is another solution that I've not yet talked about, and that's the one I'm going to be setting up on my tank. An uninterruptible power supply or UPS, such as this one here by Upsonic. UPSs are really common in the IT space as they're used to keep servers and computers running in data centers and businesses that need to protect their computer systems in the event of a power interruption. As a result of how common and ubiquitous their usage is, secondhand UPSs can be found pretty easily online and fairly cheaply from places like eBay for really good prices. Even brand new ones are priced pretty well as well, starting at about $100 for the most basic ones and then they go up from there, mostly in line with the size of the battery. A UPS is very similar to the battery backup solutions I described earlier, except instead of being limited to 12 volt output, they provide standard 220 volt wall outlets, letting you choose any of your tank's equipment to plug directly into the UPS. As you can see here, this one has three power outlets on the back. So I would choose up to three things from my tank to have powered by the UPS. They would be plugged in here and get their power as normal under regular usage. Just think of the UPS as a power board. Except when the power goes out, the batteries in the unit take over and continue supplying power. When the power comes back on, it automatically switches back over to supplying wall power to your equipment and also starts to recharge its own batteries. So it's a fully automated solution. 
Another cool feature present in most UPSs is that they will beep loudly when the power goes out, alerting you to the fact that the batteries are now in use. They can also give you more alarms when the batteries are starting to run low uh, and a myriad of other settings. More advanced models will also have USB connectivity like this or even network connectivity with Wi-Fi or Ethernet. These allow units to be hooked up to some software or services that will send you notifications to your phone or email when the power goes out. Those features, however, are obviously nice to have, but not essential. As a minimum viable solution to saving your tank and effectively managing a power out, any cheap UPS should be able to keep something like a return pump or at least a couple of wave makers running for a few hours at minimum. Obviously, the bigger the batteries of the UPS, the longer it will last. When considering what to put on your UPS, it will be a trade-off between shortening the length of time that the batteries last and lessening the impact to the tank. For most people, I would suggest a return pump is enough. Maybe one wave maker or the skimmer as well if your tank really needs the extra water aeration. I would generally not recommend, however, to put heaters on a battery backup. They consume lots of power. Most tanks, however, will be fine if the temperature slowly drops over a few hours for short or even medium length blackouts. Lights, filters, reactors, and many more bits of equipment are also non-essential for the short or medium term, so I would not put them on the UPS either. One scenario where a UPS may not be good enough as a solution for you is if your tank is highly dependent on a chiller to not get too hot. Whilst most tanks will survive a medium term cooling of the water, the opposite is generally not true. And if a tank gets too hot, that can have big consequences. So if you're reliant on your chiller, I would be looking into the automated generator option for powering the chiller at a minimum, as they consume a lot of power and no reasonably priced UPS will power them for long. I'm going to be hiding this UPS down in a cupboard down there. It will take me a little bit of effort to route the power cables for my return pump, which is the only thing I'm going to be backing up on this. Uh, I'll be plugging the return pump into the back of this, then plugging this into the wall. But that effort of a little bit of cable management is definitely worth the peace of mind and safeguarding of my tank. The effort is totally worth it. Well, that's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. Also, comment down below what solution you have in place for managing your tanks during a blackout. My name is Marcus, and you've been watching the ReefNode YouTube channel. Bye for now.